In the previous video, we have learned how to create a simple RxJS store and how to manage the state in our Angular app. In this video, we're going to move on by creating a terminal component that will be rendered inside of the primary dynamic dialog. It is important to make a difference between the dialog and the dynamic dialog components. The dialog component is the one that you might want to use when you know in advance what the content should be. The dynamic dialog is used the best when you are not sure which component is supposed to be displayed inside of it during the runtime. All the other apps that will be built during this course like Finder or Spotlight will use the same principle. Once the application is active, which can be achieved by clicking on the dock item, it will be displayed in a dialog. This is a simplified way of doing this since we will only have one active app at a time and one dialog respectively. The terminal component offers three commands, but you can add as many as you wish. If I type framework, I get Angular as a response. Author will give me the name of the channel and the UI will return the main UI library name. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the code and start building our terminal component. To be able to use the component, we'll export the terminal module from the shared UI module. This will allow us to use it in our HTML template. The template will be fairly simple. The pterminal component can be used without any attributes. But we will add a prompt to the user as in the real terminal and a list of the available commands as a welcome message. We are going to use the string enums to define the available commands in our app. Feel free to extend it according to your wishes. To do so, we'll add an enum terminal command into the config folder in the share folder. Then we go to the terminal component and import the terminal service. We'll add it to the provider survey in the components decorator because this is really the only place where it's going to be used. Then, in the constructor, we'll subscribe to the command handler and generate the response for every valid input. We'll do so by adding the getCommandResponse method which will return an output for the commands we specify. For the sake of simplicity, each one of them will return a plain string. In the deployed version, we see that there is also a dialog header with the dialog controls like close, maximize and minimize. So let's add this component now. We use the Angular generate file extension to create a component. Test deletion, export from the index and import it in the applications module are all the steps that you're already familiar to. In the terminal component, we'll add a div with a class of dialog header. Inside of it, we add another div with a class dialog header controls and place the app dialog controls inside of it. If you open it in the browser, we can see dialog control works at the top of the terminal. Then we go to the dialog controls and start by injecting the dialog ref and the dialog config services. We add a field maximized and set it to false. And we make room for the two new fields, initial height and initial width. In the ng on init, we'll try to preserve the initial values from the dialog config so that we can restore its original size after we maximize the dialog. Then we add a simple close method which just calls the close on the dialog ref service. 
and the maximize method which will make the dialog bigger or restore it to its original size once when the gold circle is clicked. The template will hold three circle icons inside of the dialog controls div. We'll make the icons a little smaller and add some spacing on the right side. Each icon should have a different color, so we add specific classes to make it so. These text helper classes will reside in the base as CSS. They will only set the color property, which will eventually read the color value from the variables. I'm gonna paste a few color variables here. Now the circle icons look better. Then we wire up the close and maximize events. Clicking on the red icon will close the dialog and clicking on the gold icon will maximize it. In the terminal component we are going to add a div with a class of dialog header title. It contains an image of a library and a text. The classes MR1 and FontBold are coming from the Prime Flex library that we'll import in a moment. This CSS library contains a lot of helper classes for spacing, colors, backgrounds, and so on. After installing the package, we can import the CSS file in our PrimeG SCSS. Now we're gonna install the terminal component a little bit. A dialog header is supposed to be a flex with a light background and I will add a variable in a second. The controls should be surrounded with a little padding and the title is also a flex with a flex growth set to 1 and this means that this flex item will take up the rest of the space and the controls will use only the minimal space that is needed to display them. We want to make the dialog a little bigger, so we adjust the dialog config in the Windows service to do so. In the end, we want to add a file called PrimeNG Overrides and override the default styles for the terminal and the dialog components as we don't want to have any internal padding and borders. We import it in the PrimeNG SAS and that's it with this video. So this is how you can create a terminal-like component in Angular with PrimeNG. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.